Ichigo stands out as one of the most powerful Shinigamis in the entire history of the Soul Society. He is even recognized as a potential candidate to be the next Soul King by the leader of the Zero Division, Ichibe Hyosube. If you watched Car 2 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, then you will have undoubtedly noticed some post credit training scenes where Ichigo is walking down a mysterious path which is located within the Royal Palace. We learn that this passageway is referred to as Irazu Sando, which translates to the path with no end entry to the shrine. And here it's revealed that Ichigo is forming a very powerful connection with the Soul King as he receives glimpses into the Soul King's memories. While all of this is going on, Ichibe is vaguely explaining the process that Ichigo is undergoing. While receiving the fragments of the Soul King's memories, he begins to be overwhelmed by huge amounts of spiritual energy which begin to flow into his body. He then disturbingly screams and contorts into unimaginable proportions, as his eyes take on a very similar appearance to Yu back when he activates the Almighty as multiple irises begin to emerge. Now in this video, I want to talk about the possibility of what would have happened if Ichigo ended up becoming the Soul King at the end of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. This video aims to explore multiple scenarios which would have led to this happening. Make sure that you stick around until the end of this video because you don't want to miss what Ichibe was planning to do to Ichigo. A lot of the information that I'll be speaking about within this video is sourced from the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels, so it's stuff that you do do not want to miss. So without further delay, here is my breakdown as to what would have happened if Ichigo ended up becoming the Soul King. It should come as no surprise as to why Ichigo draws a lot of attention to himself. He is, after all, a hybrid of all of the different races within Bleach, which include Quincy, Shinigami, Fullbringer, and lastly, Human. Out of all of Bleach's cast of characters, he was uniquely qualified to replace the Soul King. The Thousand Year Blood War arc is also referred to as the Great Soul King Protection War. It should come as no surprise that any information about the Soul King is a closely guarded secret, and it's for that reason that he's a figure that is shrouded in mystery. During the first chapter of the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels, we found out that even his death was kept a secret from the masses following the invasion of the Soul Society by the Wandan Reich, with the general public within the Soul Society just being informed that the Gote 13 had protected them. So as far as they were concerned, the Soul King was safe and sound and nothing had happened to him. Knowledge of his death was known only to a few select members, including specific captains and high-ranking seated officers. It is unbelievable to think that despite the devastating invasion led by the Quincy, millions of Soul Society residents were left in the dark following the event. This was, after all, a war that was initiated in order to target the Soul King. We already know that the Soul Society operates under an authoritarian command structure, with the Central 46 at the top of the hierarchy governing the laws of the land. So if Ichigo were to have become the new Soul King, then the vast majority of people would be oblivious to the fact that the Soul King has been replaced. The Soul King is the figure god of the Bleach universe, and he functions as the linchpin of reality who ensures the balanced existence of the world of the living, the Soul Society, and lastly, Hueco Mundo. We receive our first glimpse of him in chapter 519 of the manga. He is the father of one of the strongest villains in the entire story, Yuhabak, and the Soul King has been present since the very beginning of time, as explained by Tokinada Tsuniyashiro in volume 3 of the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels. Tokinada states that the Soul King was the original protector who stood between the Hollows and the humans for the very first time in the original primordial world. In this original version of reality, there was no distinction between life or death. From the details disseminated by Tokinada, we find out that the Soul King is the ancestor of all Quincy's, Shinigamis, and Fullbringers. Now, we need to ask ourselves, what was the price that the Soul King paid for having such immense power? The Soul King is described by Tokinada as both a devil and a savior. He ended up being mutilated and sacrificed in order to create the Three Realms. This unforgivable betrayal was carried out by the ancestors of the five great noble families. In chapter 621 of the manga, we learn that his limbs were separated from his body and became sentient beings, each of them coming to manifest their very own respective powers. All of the limbs of the Soul King have their own names and personalities. And as for now, within the Bleach story, only two limbs and one organ have been accounted for. These include the right arm, which is referred to as Mimihagi, 
which is also referred to as the right arm of stillness, because in chapter 639 of the manga, we find out that Mimihagi governs stagnation and stillness, as it has the power to stop development, growth, progress, and change. It prevents anything that tries to develop or change from happening. In chapter 616 of the manga, Ukitake reveals that he has a plan to save the Soul Society by replacing the Soul King. A black substance then rises from his body and takes the form of a large eye. Ukitake then reveals some details about his past, explaining that he should have died from lung sickness in his childhood. But after his parents had taken him to the shrine of Mimihagi, located in the outskirts of eastern Rukongai, Mimihagi ended up being absorbed into Ukitake's body, and it had effectively replaced his lungs. Therefore, Ukitake has been a host to this divine entity for hundreds of years, and this also explains how he was able to survive for so long with a fatal condition. If Ichigo were to have become the Soul King, then his limbs too would have been mutilated, just like his predecessor, which would have led to them gaining their own personalities and powers, and they may even become deities who are revered as gods within the Soul Society. Now, because Ichigo has Shinigami powers from his father and Quincy powers from his mother, we may also see different manifestations of Ichigo's powers through these limbs. For example, Ichigo's right arm could develop the ability to bring the dead back to life, since one of the key responsibilities of all Shinigami is to govern over the balance of souls between the world of the living and the afterlife. Similarly, his severed limbs may just manifest similar properties to the Soul King's limbs. The left arm of the Soul King takes up the form of Sternritter C the Compulsory Pernida. He is an elite Quincy soldier who serves under the Shoot Starfall. Pernida is unique in the sense that he did not receive his powers from Yuho Bak. He had no need for any more power because he was that powerful. The existence of Pernida raises several interesting possibilities for Ichigo's potential transformation into the Soul King. There are theories that he may be able to avoid a mindless existence by transferring his consciousness into one of his severed limbs. Pernida, who is a part of the Soul King, identifies himself as a Quincy, revealing that he is self-aware to some extent. But as the left hand of the Soul King, he denies his real origins and he does not acknowledge who he had used to belong to. Bleach does a fantastic job of portraying Ichigo's deep connections to his friends and family. So if the unthinkable did happen and he had become the Soul King, it would have a profound impact on his loved ones. So much so that he may use the last ounce of his conscious will to erase his very existence from their memories, in order to save them from having to deal with him becoming this empty husk of a being. Before Ichigo would become the Soul King, there is a scenario that would most likely play out, which is the resistance from Ichigo's friends and family to him becoming the Soul King. There are some hints within Can't Fear Your Own World which allude to the fact that Shunsui was aware of Ichibe's plan to transform Ichigo into the Soul King. As we have discussed, if he becomes the Soul King, his body parts will be severed, he would be encased within a crystalline structure as an empty vessel, governing over the balance of reality, while his body parts will be disseminated all across the three realms. Similar to how the Soul King was broken up into many pieces and scattered across reality, and these pieces had eventually found themselves within certain figures, and had even helped to form specific races of people like the Fallbringers. Via some new additions within the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, it reveals to us a very important test that Ichigo needs to pass in order to qualify him as being able to replace the Soul King. Via these exclusive scenes, we see Ichigo walking through a room filled with immense spiritual pressure, and this room is referred to as Irazu Sando, which means no entry to the road leading up to the entrance of a Shinto shrine. We see the entrance of the shrine in the anime, which is identified by a wooden gateway known as a Tori. Fascinatingly, upon revisiting this scene from episode 15 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, it's apparent that as Ichigo gets closer to the Tori gate, he starts to feel a burden of spiritual pressure weighing down on him. The distance between him and the Tori gate seems to then extend exponentially, and as per Ichibe's warning, those who are unworthy to be a Soul King vessel will succumb to the weight of the spiritual pressure and perish, and they will never be able to leave the realm of Irazu Sando. Some have compared the burden felt by the spiritual pressure to be the burden that is placed upon the Soul King who holds the balance of the three realms. Within volume 1 of Can't Fear Own World, Ichibe gazes at the corpse of Yuho Bak, which appears to have replaced the Soul King who was killed during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. During this scene, he is also accompanied by Shun Sui, who asks him if this is the new Soul King, as Ichibe states that the concepts of old and new do not apply to the Soul King. Ichibe believes that there is immense value in having a deity there that they can simply revere and call the Soul King. From this, Shunsui infers that the true essence of power lies in nature.
names. He then point blank asks Ichibe if Ichigo was going to become the Soul King replacement as a worst case scenario. Ichibe then gives a chilling response by saying that it's a good thing that Ichigo wasn't the new Soul King. This all but confirms the fact that if Yuhobak had not been able to fulfill this role, then Ichigo would have been the next candidate to replace the Soul King. This lines up perfectly with the post credit scenes which are exclusive to the anime, as we now begin to understand that Ichibe was training Ichigo in order to test his power levels to see if he could withstand the burden of the three realms and ultimately ensure that he is a worthy Soul King candidate who can regulate the balance of souls. Now for Ichigo to achieve the level of the Soul King then this would mean that he would need to unleash his very own Almighty, which is a defining trait of a Soul King candidate. Both Yuhobak and the original Soul King exhibited the Almighty via the multiple irises within their eye. The anime reveals while Ichigo is in Irazu Sando, multiple irises also appear within his eyes too. These are the very same red irises which appear when Yuhobak uses the Almighty. Now the only problem within this situation is that if Ichigo utilizes the powers of the Almighty in order to fight and defeat Yuhobak, then he may also become a massive threat to the Soul Society if he uses the Almighty in order to learn about a future where he may become a Soul King. Having become so familiar with the character of Ichigo, it would be obvious that he would try to avoid any foreseeable future where he is forced into becoming the Soul King. So if there was an all-out battle between Ichigo and Ichibe, while well, Ichibe's naming abilities wouldn't work on Ichigo since he would be able to use the Almighty in order to negate the effects of Ichibe's powers, similar to how Yuhobak did. Furthermore, Ichigo would end up warning his friends of Ichibe's sinister plans. This would possibly lead to a rebellion forming within the Gotei 13, similar to how an opposing faction had formed during the Soul Society arc who were against the execution of Rukia. So I'm sure there would be Shinigami who are for Ichigo being the Soul King and those who are against him being the Soul King pitted against each other, as well as having to deal with the Zero Division who would also be for Ichigo becoming the Soul King. Ichigo is recognized as a transcendent being due to the fact that he is a human with a unique combination of Quincy, Hollow and Shinigami powers. Now this transcendence was first noted after he had executed the final Getsuga Tensho within chapter 419 of the manga. Within Bleach, a transcendent being is defined as one who has soared beyond the boundaries of standard soul types like Hollow's or Shinigami. Now such a transcendent being possesses spiritual pressure which is so immense that lesser entities can't detect it unless it is deliberately lowered by the transcendent being. An example of this is when Aizen who was empowered by the Hokyoku had lowered his spiritual pressure so that he could toy with Ichigo's friends instead of reducing them down to dust if he were to have approached them with his full spiritual pressure. Aizen transcended after reaching the limits of his Shinigami powers while his body was fused with the Hokyoku. Following this he was described as a divine being. As far as I am aware, Ichigo, Yuhobak, Aizen and the Soul King are the only characters within Bleach who have ever achieved transcendence. Yuhobak because of consuming the Soul King and the sum of its parts, he was able to gain access to Quincy, Shinigami and Hollow Powers. Now remember he did also gain Hollow Powers after he had absorbed Ichigo's Hollow Powers earlier and this is all in addition to him already possessing the Almighty as his Shrift ability which may have been as a result of him being the son of the Soul King. Ichigo is a hybrid of all four races while Aizen achieved transcendence by merging Hollow properties into his Shinigami soul. Ichibei has not yet achieved transcendence which explains why Yuhobak was able to kill him. The Bleach universe categorizes power in terms of dimensions, so each race has a ceiling which limits how much potential power that they can possess. In order to transcend these limits, you need to be able to cross over into new dimensions and then purify and sharpen your power across each of these dimensions merged as one. This will then result in the individual reaching new heights. This was the basis of the research that was conducted by Urahara and Aizen while exploring how to empower the soul of a Shinigami by fusing hollow properties with it. While almost every outcome of a holification experiment had resulted in an unstable being via the formation of a perfected Hokyoku, which we learn also contained a piece of the Soul King within it, Aizen was able to successfully transcend by using the Hokyoku to successfully merge hollow properties into his soul. Within volume 3 of Can't Feel Own World, we learn that in order to become a permanent linchpin who oversees the balance of the world, you have to break the canopy of the soul and become a being who surpasses the spirit power of monsters like Yamamoto. After learning this, Hisagi speculates that Urahara may have created the Hokyoku in order to achieve such a goal. But Urahara clarifies that he was just curious and this curiosity had led him into creating the Hokyoku. 
through. In order to break the soul canopy, it means to break through the ceiling or limits of the soul in order to become a transcendent being. Ichigo is really a monster and he didn't require a Hokyoku in order to achieve transcendence like Aizen did. A being very similar to Ichigo called Hikone is revealed within Can't Fear Your Own World and Hikone has the powers of several races within him, like Hollow, Quincy, Shinigami and Fullbring powers. Tokinada had planned for Hikone to become the next Soul King. Now the different aspects of Ichigo's powers are represented by the colourful Reiatsu that surrounds him within the anime exclusive Irazu Zando scenes. He has the power of Shinigami represented by the golden yellow Reiatsu colour, the power of Quincy represented by the blue Reiatsu, the power of Fullbringers represented by green, and lastly hollow powers represented by the red Reiatsu, which ultimately proves the presence and existence of the different races within Ichigo's being. In chapter 613 of the manga, it is hinted that Yuhobak was aware of Ichibe's plans for Ichigo, as he offers to lay Ichigo to rest with his own hands. He says that Ichigo will be destroyed by the cogs of fate, which infers to Ichibe's sinister plan to transform Ichigo into the Soul King. And it's not that Yuhobak actually cares about Ichigo, it's more that the process of becoming the Soul King is so horrifying and cruel that not even Yuhobak would wish this upon his worst enemy, a fate that his father had to endure. After being mutilated, the remainder of Ichigo's life would be spent as a living corpse suffering for all eternity which is horrifying and something that Aizen and other characters like Urahara, Haribel and Hisagi find to be very disturbing and frankly repulsive. In Can't Fear Your Own World, when Hisagi sees what's being done to Yuhabak's corpse and he learns that this is what Ichibei had planned to do to Ichigo, his whole manner of speech shifts with contempt clearly being conveyed from his tone. In chapter 612 of the manga, Ichibei knowing that Ichigo would be unable to kill Yuhabak sends him anyway on this suicide mission to defeat the big bad. But what if Ichibei's plan was a success? How would the events have unfolded during the Thousand Year Blood War arc if following Ichigo's failed battle against Yuhobak, in a weakened state he ended up being forced to become the Soul King? Well, from the Can't Fear Unworld light novels, we learn that it was by sheer luck that Ichigo was able to avoid this fate. Yuha consumed the remains of the Soul King and thus became a valid candidate for the role of the Soul King. But what would have happened if Yuhobak had not consumed the remains of the Soul King? I think that Ichibei would have allowed Ichigo to go all out in a battle against Yuhobak, which would have weakened him to a point where Ichibei would have been able to intervene with the other members of the Zero Division, and through their combined might, I'm sure they would have been able to finish off Yuhobak. Now, you may be thinking, if Yuhobak had used the Almighty and he was aware of how things would have panned out, then he could have just absorbed Ichigo at an earlier point in order to stop him from being defeated. But there's one thing that you need to remember, is that Yuhobak had foreseen the demise of the Soul King by the hands of Ichigo via the Almighty. This may hint that Yuhobak had lacked the ability to directly kill the Soul King, and this is why he needed Ichigo alive in order to do this for him. Because after Yuha had initially stabbed the Soul King, he was still alive. So if Ichigo did end up becoming the new Soul King, then there is frankly nothing that Yuhobak could do about it, except maybe hope for another Soul King candidate to come along and kill Ichigo for him. Yuhobak actually got really lucky, because the only other Soul King candidates are Ginjo and Aizen, and we know that they are not Quincy's. So Yuhobak wouldn't be able to pull off the same trick that he did with Ichigo by controlling the Quincy blood within his body in order to force him to kill the Soul King. After having thoroughly read the manga, we can identify five key abilities that the Soul King possesses, which include soul regulation, precognition, stagnation governance, evolution governance, and lastly, miracle manifestation. If Ichigo were to replace the Soul King, he would acquire immeasurable spiritual pressure. This is demonstrated when Yuhobak, who already possesses a large amount of spiritual energy, after having absorbed the Soul King, he collapses from the sheer pressure, and his body actually needs time to fully adapt to the spiritual pressure. During this time, the Soul King's Reiatsu pours out of Yuhobak, and it manifests as countless shadow creatures that threaten to destroy the Serite. Ichigo would also be able to modify the bones of the members of the Zero Division through his Oken Bestowment ability. This allows a person to enter the Royal Palace, as we learned within Chapter 519. In addition to this, Ichigo would now be able to see into the future. He would also be immune to the precognitive abilities of the Almighty. In Chapter 617, Yuhobak states that the Soul King and his body parts are not appearing in any of his visions, and this shows us how powerful the Soul King really is. If Ichigo ended up becoming the Soul King after the Thousand Year Blood War arc, it is very likely that only Shunsui and Ichibei would know about Ichigo's fate and that he is now the new linchpin holding the three realms together. Orihime, Chad and Uryu would most likely 
be forcefully taken back to the world of the living in order to avoid any backlash if they were to learn about the truth. His father Ishin would be none the wiser until he arrives onto the battlefield with Ryuken and notices that his son's Reatsu has disappeared. I think that Orihime would try to use her powers of reality rejection to force back time and rescue Ichigo from such a horrible fate. Characters like Rukia and Byakuya I'm assuming would be at the head of any resistance considering the fact that Ichigo had rescued Rukia from execution. Now the Gotei 13 would have sided with Ichibe as their priorities are saving the world and they would be ready to sacrifice even one individual if it meant that reality could be saved as a whole. This is just the way that the world works within Bleach and it's why characters like Urahara side with the status quo. If Ichigo refuses to become the Soul King willingly and a fight ends up breaking out, I doubt that even his friends could protect him from Ichibe. Shunsui was aware of Ichibe's plans which is why we had a scene within the manga and the anime where he visits Ichigo's friends within the world of the living and he offers them soul tickets in order to travel to visit Ichigo on the off chance that he may never be able to return to the world of the living. This occurs while Ichigo is recovering and training in the royal palace so Ichibe may have at some point spoken with him while Ichigo was in the royal palace or alternatively during the time when the Zero Division had briefly visited the Soul Society right after the first Quincy invasion. This hints at Shunsui already supporting Ichibe and Urahara probably would have done the same. During the substitute Shinigami arc you could argue that Urahara didn't train Ichigo in order to save Rukia but instead his real motive was to prevent the Hokyoku from falling into the wrong hands. Byakuya would probably be one of the most outspoken critics against Ichigo becoming the Soul King. He was the first captain that Ichigo used Bankai against during the Soul Society arc. Ichigo's actions and willingness to defy the do it by the book mentality completely altered Byakuya's frame of mind and his world view on certain things. In chapter 512, Byakuya after being thoroughly defeated by Asnod shamefully asks Ichigo to protect the Soul Society on his behalf. He obviously has a lot of faith in him and knows how powerful he is. He is aware that Ichigo's only real duty is to protect Karakura Town and being a man of honour, it embarrasses him to ask for help from Ichigo who in reality should have no part in any of this battle. If anything, this demonstrates that Byakuya not only respects Ichigo but he cares for him and this is why I believe he wouldn't just stand aside and let Ichigo become the Soul King. Kubo explains that the logic and reasoning as to why Ichibe and the Zero Division do what they do behind the scenes is for the sole purpose of maintaining the balance of reality, recognizing that the world requires both good and evil. While Ichibe's strategy might seem reprehensible, it is essential for maintaining the status quo and to ensure stability across the worlds. Without a proper linchpin, reality would deconstruct itself and supposedly return back to its original primordial state, where there would be no boundaries between humans and hollows, and this time no powerful figure on the level of the Soul King would exist in order to protect every human from the hollows. This is ultimately what Yuhobak had wanted. He wanted to rid the concept of death from reality. There exists a paradox within the Bleach universe, and it involves the morality of right and wrong. How can the Soul Society be depicted as righteous when they are willing to sacrifice one of their key saviors, Ichigo, by supporting an existence which allows him to become a living corpse, while on the other hand individuals like Aizen and Yuhobak are branded as villains when their aspirations are arguably rooted in justice and compassion. Aizen had wanted to rule over reality as its just ruler, while on the other hand Yuhobak had wanted to free his father from the suffering of being the linchpin. The lines between good and evil are blurred within the Bleach world, and similar to the left and right arm of the Soul King, it ultimately falls upon those who support stagnation against those who support progress and evolution. Fans have debated whether if Ichigo would become the Soul King of his own choice as something that he would do in order to protect his friends and family. However, this would seem to be out of character as he is choosing to leave the ones that he loves behind. Orihime especially would be devastated as she is shown to have developed feelings for Ichigo. In chapter 237 of the manga, Orihime is given one last chance to say goodbye to a special person before leaving for Hueco Mundo. This of course ends up being Ichigo, so it would be tragic for her if the man that she loves would turn into this all-powerful being that is neither alive or dead. And it goes without saying that if this fate had befallen Ichigo, then it would make for a very grim and disturbing ending to the Bleach manga. While Ichigo's friends could potentially visit him by using the soul tickets given to them by Shunsui, they would most likely leave mentally scarred after seeing the tragic fate that has befallen than Ichigo. There is every chance that Urahara may harbour some regrets about how things would have turned out, but he would have reassured himself that Ichigo needed to become the Soul King in order to maintain the balance across
across the realms. During the second volume of Can't Fear Your Own World, Hisagi reflects upon the fact that Urahara had saved the Soul Society from crisis multiple times. And we know from chapter 421 of the manga that Urahara has knowledge about the Soul King, so I have no doubt that he would come to terms with Ichigo being the next Soul King, because without him, the entire structure of reality would fall apart. He is fully aware of the dark truth of the world and has accepted it. It is insane to think about, but I think that even Aizen would back up Ichigo and fight for him not to become the Soul King. Reflecting on everything that we have spoken about within this video, it makes you wonder if Old Man Zangetsu was aware of Ichigo's potential to be a Soul King candidate. So it's for this reason that he had wanted to shield him away from becoming a Shinigami in order to ultimately protect him from such a grim fate. During Ichigo's journey to unlock the final Getsuga Tensho, Tensa Zangetsu admits that there's a difference in the things that the two of them want to protect. While Ichigo's commitment to safeguarding his loved ones is very clear, Tensa Zangetsu emphasizes that his intention has always been to protect Ichigo. Given that Old Man Zangetsu is a manifestation of Yuhobak and it represents Ichigo's Quincy powers, it would make sense that he had wanted to restrict Ichigo's abilities and his powers in order to prevent him from being manipulated by the Soul Society. Kubo does not explicitly reveal this within the manga, but there's a lot that we can piece together after learning about Tensa Zangetsu's desire to protect Ichigo. In summary, Ichigo becoming the Soul King would definitely be a fate worse than death. It's an outcome that would deeply affect his friends and family, and while he would gain immeasurable power, it would come at the cost of absolutely everything. This very act may allow rumours to spread within the Soul Society, and it may form a rebellion amongst the Gotei 13, who would actively seek revenge against Ichibei for having wronged Ichigo. These Shinigami would be opposed to the status quo, and it would be made up of Ichigo's allies, and it's pretty crazy to think about how the story would unfold from this point onwards. Ichigo is the saviour of the Soul Society, and he is loved and respected by countless people. And it's for this reason that a rebellion would form in the first place. So Ichibei's plan to transform Ichigo into the Soul King may backfire on him massively, resulting in the breakup of the Gotei 13 and for the true colours of Ichibei being exposed to everybody. So let me know your thoughts on the possibility of Ichigo becoming the Soul King. What makes you think that he is a worthy candidate of being the Soul King in the first place? And what do you think are the consequences to the Bleach world if he had taken up this role? Let me know if this video has helped you to understand the power of Ichigo as well as the properties of the Soul King. What are your thoughts on the Irazu Sando anime exclusive post credit scenes? And do you think that we're going to get more similar scenes in Core 3 and 4 which allude to Ichibei's plan to make Ichigo the Soul King? I look forward to reading all of your thoughts so definitely continue the discussion in the comments and lastly thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.